So, like I said earlier, what we're going to be talking about this evening is, does God exist? That's what we're going to be answering this evening, or hoping to answer. What I want to do is, for those of y'all who don't believe God exists, I want to plant a seed in your brain. Not actually. That sounds a little bit weird, like I'm an alien about to like open your brain up and like, like you know... I'm not abducting anyone this evening, I promise it's not that weird. But what I want to do is I want to, I want to just kind of plant a seed of doubt in your brain. Because here's what I know. I know far too many atheists that believe there's nothing out there. When you die, nothing happens, and you're here for no reason. I actually know too many atheists that are killing themselves. I do. You wake up in the morning, you know nothing. That's, like, you're not here for a reason. You have absolutely zero purpose. And when you die, nothing happens to you. You, physically nothing happens. And so tonight what I want to do is I want to just plant a seed in your brain that maybe there is a God. And I'm not going to do that because like I said earlier, like I grew up going to churches where pastors would be like, God exists. Why? Scripture says so. And it's like, yes. And for people who don't believe in God, don't believe in the validity of God, why would I hold this book that I don't even believe is inherently true? And why would I go, oh yeah, if that book that I don't believe is true says this, then I'm going to believe it. And so what I know is that God created everything on this earth with his fingerprint on it. Meaning everything that he created here on earth is meant to point us back to him. So this evening we're going to unpack that. Y'all cool with that? So we're going to unpack, is there a God? And we're also going to unpack this too. Why do we need a God? Because from a moralistic standpoint, if there's no God, we run into some moral problems or just problems with what we would view as morals today. We'd have a problem with it, right? So y'all cool? Y'all ready to dive into all this stuff? Cool. I'm going to do math. And so that's going to be a lot of fun for everyone to watch. If you are taking notes this evening, the title is help. I think God is dumb. Okay. That's the title for this evening. Help, I think God is dumb. No, that'd be kind of weird if we all just said, you know, everyone chants, I think God is dumb. Like that would be kind of a weird chant in a church, right? Like I just, that would feel weird, right? So we're probably not going to do that, but this, that's the title. Because here's what I want to know, and here's what I also want to sympathize with, is that I know that some of y'all in this room, and I don't know every single one of y'all absolutely personally, so I don't know what y'all think, but I think I have a good enough grasp to know on just humanity as a whole that not everyone in this room is probably a believer. Not everyone in this room is. And you know what? That's cool. Thank you for being here. What I want you to know is that this place is a safe place to ask questions. We're not going to go, you better believe in Jesus. Uh, okay, this is about to be a really, no, I'm not going to make the reference. There's a reference. It was a really niche reference. No one was going to understand it. If you don't believe in Jesus, we're going to stab you in the face. We're not going to do that. That's not how we operate here. This place, we call, this church is called Refuge for a reason. We're a refuge for people who believe and who don't believe. What I want you to hear is that this is a safe place to ask questions. At the very end of all of it, we're going to open it up for questions. If you want to stand up and go, Lance, you're an idiot, you can do that. That's totally fine with me. But if you're going to say that I'm an idiot, you better be able to back it up. You can't just go, I disagree with what you're saying. Well, why? Because I just don't agree. Well, that's not a valid argument. I want to have, at the end, TJ, please put your hand down. Thank you. You can ask it at the end, but I, not right now, because I will chase squirrels and my brain will derail itself. Thanks, partner. This is a safe place to ask questions, whether you are a unbeliever or a believer. Because there are days that I sit there and I go, Jesus, I believe in you, but I also still have questions. But if we, ans if we had all of our questions answered, why would Jesus ask us to put our faith in him? We wouldn't put our faith in Jesus if we knew everything, right? We would put our knowledge in him. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, us as human beings will not be able to fully grasp this. But anyways, let's get back to it. If you have questions, I would love to answer them. If you're an unbeliever and you have questions, ask them. If you're a believer and have questions, ask them. We're not judging you. We're not going to make you feel dumb. I want to answer the questions to the best of my abilities. Cool beans, everybody understand what I'm saying? Picking up what I'm dropping down, sniffing what I'm stepping in. Yep. I'm going to hit you. Don't ever say that again. <clears throat> so let's answer the first question. Does God exist? Okay. So when we start to begin to look at the universe, oh, universe, that's a big word, right? 
not a big word, but it entails a lot of, universe is a small word for a big thing, right? So when we begin to look at the universe, scientists agree that for life to be created, there must be very specific conditions, right? If the necessity for life was just, brother, you just need to have ground, There'd be life everywhere, wouldn't there be? Mars would be inhabited already. Elon Musk wouldn't be trying to shoot rockets up to Mars. The moon would have moon people. We would have people on Pluto, which I heard in a statistic that it actually rains diamonds on Pluto because the atmosphere is so dense. I would love to live on Pluto. Yeah, I'd be rolling in some dough, wouldn't I be? Put your hand down, Ricky. So... Not only do we need specific conditions, we also need consistent specific conditions, okay? I'm going to draw. Please don't make fun of my drawings, okay? This is a sun. Y'all like my sun? All the way out here. Y'all pay attention, I know. I'm skipping planets. This is Earth, okay? Say hi, Earth. Okay, if you were were to guess, how far would you think that the Earth is away from the sun? A what? Three suns? Oddly specific. Yes, CJ, how far do you think away the, the sun is away from the Earth? Brother, that's a not, no. Good guess. You're close. Not really. Anybody else got a good guess? Light years. Not quite either. So the earth at its longest point. So you have to understand the earth when it's going around the sun isn't in a direct circle. It's an eclipse or, you know, thank you. An elliptical, right? At the Earth's closest point, it is 91.4 million miles away. At its closest point. Okay, TJ, you were a little bit off. At its farthest distance, it is 94.5 million miles away. Okay, so what do we get when we average 91.4 and 94.5? What, what's the average there? 92 million miles away. At average, the earth is 92, I'm going to draw it because I have an expo marker and I can't help myself. 92 million miles away. That's a horrible looking nine. Thank you. You're really boosting my confidence. Okay, 92 million, that doesn't even look like a nine. We're going to pretend like it does. 92 million miles away. So, at the Earth's closest distance to the sun, it's 91.4. Here's what happens. When you look at the universe, or specifically this solar system, if you go too far away from the sun, what happens? You get big cold, right? You get too close to the sun, what happens? Big hot. Big hot, right? So... The earth is in that, what they would call is the habitable, y'all pay attention here, I'm throwing out big words. What'd you say? The Goldilocks zone, aka also known as the habitable zone, meaning life can be sustained within this zone, okay? Now, y'all pay attention. At its closest distance, which is 91.4 million miles away, the earth is exactly 1 million miles away from being inhabitable if it were to come closer, This means if the earth were to move just, and understand here, 1 million miles compared to 91.4 million miles is like 1% less, or maybe, sorry, a little bit more than 1%. It's like 1.07459, something like that, okay? So right around 1%. If the earth were to move 1% closer to the sun, we would all burn up and die. And we would completely lose our atmosphere. Okay? Now, y'all ready for the math? Y'all ready for the math here? I'm going to start building upon some of this science stuff, and I promise you we're going to make, we're going to add like a nice little bow at the very end, okay? So gravity, what is gravity? Anybody know what gravity is? Right? If I do this, what happens? Gravity takes a hold of it and drops it to the floor, right? You happy? 
Okay. So there's this thing called the gravitational constant, meaning everywhere you go on Earth, gravity's pulling down on you. If gravity were to stop pulling down on you, what would happen? Float off into space. So this is the equation to find the gravitational constant. Y'all ready for this? I did a lot of studying here. Okay, F equals G over M to the M1, M2 over R squared. Okay, this right here is the equation, that almost dropped out of my hand, to find the gravitational constant, meaning the amount of gravity that's pulling on you at any given time here on Earth, okay? Now, in science, when we start to talk about gravity units, it's 10 to the 60th power. So one unit, when we talk about units here, it's 10 to the 60th power, okay? I know, it's a lot of powers here, okay? Now, let me give you all a little bit of a key here. F is gravitational force. G is the gravitational constant. R is the distance between the objects, and M1 is the mass of the first object, and M2 is the mass of the first object. So M1 would be like me, M2 would be the Earth, R squared would be uh, the distance between the objects. I'm pretty close to the Earth at the moment. And G would be the gravitational constant, am I correct in that? I am correct in that. And then F would be the gravitational force that I am feeling at this exact moment, okay? All right, 10 to the 60th power. That's one gravitational unit. Scientists believe, and understand that this right here, this gravitational constant works here on Earth. It works on Pluto. It works everywhere. This is how you calculate it anywhere you go. Now, Space as a whole has a gravitational constant because why? We have these massive gas giants, we have these massive suns, these massive planets that anywhere you are in the universe, there is some level of gravity pulling you towards something, right? Yes? Okay. Scientists believe that if the gravitational constant was one point higher, meaning there was more gravity pulling down on us, all the mass in the universe would have been pulled to one place, would have all congealed together, and would have collapsed in on itself. One unit. One unit lower, meaning gravity is one unit less strong. What would have happened was is nothing would have formed and everything would have just be floating out there in space. Nothing would have formed. It would have just been random gas in the universe. Now, let me ask you this. Does anybody have a cell phone? Cool. Cool. Can I, let me see your cell phone, Grady. Throw it? Cool. Let's say that I'm on the beach somewhere and I find Grady's phone. Actually, you know what? We're going to, we're going to backtrack real quick. Grady, your phone works, right? I can make a phone call. Cool. What's your password? Just tell Siri to call Bryce. Hey, Siri, call Bryce. Bryce is his brother. My brother and the guy who's... Yeah. So his phone works. It's making a phone call like it should. Is it calling Bryce Crocker or Bryce Hogan, by the way? Crocker. It's your brother. <laughs> it's making a phone call like it should, and hopefully he picks up. He won't. He won't. Good. All right. Can anybody go into detail about how my phone connects to the cellular tower and how my voice... Ricky, can you? Uh-huh. Okay, go for it. Uh, your call has been forwarded to voicemail. The person you're trying to reach Please. is not available. At the tone... Please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up. Hey, Bryce. I love you. Bye. Explain to me how I was able to make a phone call and leave a voicemail. Explain it to me in detail. Your phone will send a radio wave. Shh, I want to hear. To a satellite, which then bounces back to a third point. So you don't know what happens. Cool. Thank you for telling me. A long, drawn-out explanation to tell me you don't know. Can anybody in this room answer how when I hit the phone... Can you really? Yes. He is full of useless information. Good. No, this is useful. Tell me. There's a bunch of radio transceivers and senders in your cellular device. It's the same way as a radio. Okay. He's already used five more. I have. So... Your phone will send radio waves to a cell tower. Cell tower. While it bounces between a bunch of different cell towers. Right. It eventually gets to the caller. Right. And they're able to pick it up. Yes. 
and they're able to pick it up and hello, hi. Okay, cool. Math is not, but this is relatively simple. Let me, let me answer this for me. Those of y'all who didn't know, if y'all didn't know that information, did your phone still work? Yes. Yeah, those of y'all who now we all know how cell phones work. But before that, did y'all know how the cell phones worked? No. But, did you, but did your phone still work? Like sending a text message, receiving a phone call from your mom saying that you're out late or whatever that is, y'all still know how that works, right? Okay, so let me, let, riddle me this. If I was walking along the beach, thanks, Grady, I appreciate you. Let me use your phone. If I was walking across the beach, did I hit you in the chest? Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, that, was a, that was a no look throw. If I was walking across the beach and I found someone's cell phone on the beach, would my first, would my first reaction go, oh my gosh, this beach in this water have spent so much time building this phone? This is crazy. Just coincidence. How did this work? The case and the Zach Bryan tweet right on the cover, on the, on the wallpaper. How did it know? All, did, would I do that if I looked at a phone that was laying there on a beach and just be like, wow, coincidence is crazy. All of these molecules in the sand. All, I wouldn't think that, right? What would I think? Somebody left it here and that person who left it there bought it from somebody who manufactures it. And the people that manufacture it, hear me, listen, the people who manufactured it got all of the blueprints from the guy who created it. I wouldn't just walk along the beach and go, cell phone, crazy how the beach just made that. Coincidence, it just came and it just happened here. The sheer craziness of how close the earth is exactly to the sun and the exact gravitational constant that needed to be there for everything to form in the universe. Is that just coincidence? Anybody know anything about termites? Do you really? Cool. So termites, it's really weird how termites work. Termites eat wood, but naturally termites cannot turn wood into sucralose or fruit, or I think it's sucralose, for basically for them to be able to break it down and turn it into food. They can't naturally do that, right? So termites have these weird bugs and basically kind of like parasitic things in their stomach. And what, they, what the termite does is it feeds the parasites, the wood, and then the parasites break down the wood turn it into sucralose so the termite can keep living. So it's a parasitic relationship. Symbiotic, sorry, symbiotic relationship. I am not versed in biology. I failed it in high school, actually. Keep your hand down. You can ask questions at the very end. Listen, listen. What came first? No, come at it, no, no, come at it from the atheistic standpoint here. What would have come first? It was just so the ocean. All right, good call, right? What? What does scientists actually believe? Yep. Yep. And they could only form because of what? Who made gravity? Bingo. Okay. So y'all find something intelligent on the ground. Y'all don't automatically assume it, it just coincidence and happenstance happened to be there, and that's crazy. Oh my gosh, the sand just made an iPhone. <laughs> the fact that there is such a level of technology and such a level of intricacy tells me and tells us that there was someone along the road that designed it and someone that created it. That right there in and of itself is the proof that I'm pulling on to say that there isn't an existence of God that God does exist. Now let's hit it from a psychological standpoint or a philosophical, whatever you want to take this from, okay? From the philosophical standpoint, is anybody in here like art first off? Anybody, like we got any art buffs? Sick. I'm going to call on you right there. Cool hat. So riddle me this. Riddle me this. I was just about to say that. Quit stealing my punchlines. Okay, riddle me this, Batman. What kind of art are you a fan of? Okay, sick. So, like, Van Gogh, he used, no, what did he use? Did he use oil paint? He did, right? Okay, we'll say he did, right? Just for this case. 
okay? If I were to paint Starry Night and be like, look guys, I painted this, would it have as much value as Van Gogh's? What if Van Gogh never existed? And I came in here with an original painting and was like, I did this. And it was Starry Night. Would it be, would it be worth anything? Van Gogh, when he was alive, couldn't sell his art. It wasn't until he died that he could actually sell his art. And when people discovered it. Now, hear me here. Anybody here a fan of music? Okay. My favorite rapper for a period of time was Juice World. Okay. His greatest album. No, hear me. Hear me, hear me, hear me. His greatest album was Goodbye and Good Riddance. Everything he made after that was trash. Yeah, because he was dead. You can fight me. He's dead now. If I, if Juice World were to have never existed and never made that album, and I sang over all of those, all of those songs, do you think those songs would be worth anything? Maybe. No. If I made all those songs and you walked out of these doors and someone, some dude was walking down 336 and you go, yo, 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 dude, do you know who Lance is? They'd be like, get away from me, you schizo. I need you away from me immediately. Okay, Juice World. Right? Same thing with Van Gogh. Same thing with whoever painted the Mona Lisa. It's escaping my mind. Whoever it was. The same thing with all of these paintings. Listen, listen, listen. The paintings themselves have zero value. It's the person who created it. Right? As soon as you say Van Gogh, people go, oh yeah, famous artist, right? Cool beans. Steve Jobs, iPhone. Uh, uh, what's that other dude's name that created Microsoft. Bill Gates, oh, Bill Gates, Microsoft, right? <laughs> Hear me. Art only gets its value from the artist. So let me ask you this. If there was no creator, would you have value? If I was here by accident, if I had zero purpose, and when I die, nothing happens to me, do I have any value? I have no value. Okay, so if I have no value, let's just murder everybody. Hey, 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 hear me. If no one has value, hear me. If nobody has value, no, that's a little too far. If nobody has value, if nobody has purpose, if when you die, nothing happens, hey, Murder isn't that bad. Hey, you annoyed me. I'm just going to kill you. Now, hear me here. When we start, put your hand down. You can ask questions after. When we start to have some of these questions about, well, if you're here on a, by an accident, you're just created by some cosmic thing, and there is no God, understand that the only thing that you are is matter and energy. That's all you are. Just matter and energy. That's all you are. So if that's the case, who cares? Who cares? See, that's the thing, though. The, 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 the three things that atheists and atheism struggles to answer is, why am I here, what happens when I die, and what's the ultimate meaning of life? Why is murder and genocide a bad thing? But why? Why does that matter? But who made it bad? There's a lot of, you know, hear me. The atheistic standpoint, what they believe is that morals evolved over time. Now hear me. That was a funny noise. That was good. Perfect timing. If morals evolved over time, if I were to take a pacifist and somebody uh, who, like a murderer and a pacifist and stick them in a room, who's winning? The murderer. Okay, so that means the murderer is around longer to procreate right? And because he's around longer to procreate, what's going to happen? He's going to say, hey dog, little children that I've created, it's okay to murder. From just a really basic overviewed standpoint, can we hold on to that? Thank you. From a, from a overviewed standpoint, that's what we get when we say that morals evolved over time. When morals evolve over time, what happens is, is the strongest person wins. Think of Genghis Khan. No. I, listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's what we have to look at. 
For something to be true, it has to be taken to both extremes and it still has to be true. Truth isn't truth unless it can be applied to everything and still be true. It has to. So this means we really take this from the point and really stretch it to its extremes, what's gonna happen? Murder is okay. It's fine. This is, this is the moral paradigm. This is why there needs to be a God. And that's why I believe that there is a God. To say things just evolved over time, it doesn't make sense. Morals don't evolve over time. Taken to the extremes, it won't. Now, I got one more thing, and then we'll ask, we will have a time for questions, okay? It's actually, the one last thing I have is a C.S. Lewis quote. C.S. Lewis puts it well, I love it. It says, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. Meaning, if I crave something here on earth that does not exist here on earth, that means there is something outside of earth. And I can tell you this is true because like I said last week, there are some of y'all that can't go months without dating because you're trying to satisfy a hole that no human being can satisfy. Now, I'm going to give you all a wager, okay? And I want you all to really take in this wager. I really want you all to think about this. If I'm right, and there's a God, actually, I'm going to backtrack. If I'm wrong, and there is not a God, but I live my life in a way that I believe that there is a God, when I die, do I lose anything? I just go into nothing, just like everybody else. If I'm right and there is a God, what do you lose?